Hello again everyone, Craig here from Sound Iron, and in today's walkthrough we're going to be checking out our newly upgraded old busted granny piano. This library captures the heart and soul of an old rundown upright piano with a few broken strings, some rickety keys, and many decades of hard use and abuse. This cult classic has been revamped with a new user interface, sound design atmospheric pads, custom effects presets, a plethora of DSP effects modules, and more. So let's go ahead and dive in and check out some of the sounds and features within the newly upgraded old busted granny piano. All right, so before we dive in and start checking out some of the sounds and features within the newly upgraded Old Busted Granny Piano, I want to play for you an example from the entertainer using this library because it really fits, has that old-timey ragtime sound, and I think it would be a great example for you to hear this library in action. So let's go ahead and check that out right now. So as I mentioned earlier for this upgrade, we've given it a new user interface, so there's so much more possibilities that you have with this library as far as sound design and really taking it from just an old upright piano and really expanding on it. So I want to play for you some of the custom effects presets that we designed for this library because they're really geared for just kind of getting inspiration started and just, you know, really seeing the possibilities that you have with this library. So let's go ahead and check some of these out now. Thank you. 
So for this user interface, it's got four different layers. Two of them, layers one and two, have the same sample sets. And then for layers three and four, you have two ambisynth layers. So you can combine different ambiences as well as some sub sustains and staccatos. And then above this, if you click this little icon up here, you'll see you have the advanced tab. Here you have some LFO, filter, and an ARP section. So you can get a little bit more into sound design territory with this. And for the ARP section, you also have some different presets to choose from. So if you click any of these, you'll see some of the different ones available. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn this layer on and let's see what we got. And then you can change the direction. So if you want it to be down and up, up or down, you have a bunch of different ones to choose from. So let's just do up and down, you can change the beat. So if you want to be a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and increase this even more. So if you're not much of a piano virtuoso like myself, something like this can come in handy, especially for just being able to craft in really quick arpeggiation stuff fast. So definitely experiment with that if you like to do that sort of thing. And then also while you're in the advanced tab, if you head over here to the right, you'll see these art options. So you have pedal volume, key volume, as well as a velocity range. So if you want to control the range of the velocity, you'll see that when you limit that range, it makes it to where no matter how hard you play, it's only going to play those dynamics back. So and then for the pedal volume, if you don't want to hear that at all, you can just turn that off or you can lower the volume. So right now I'm stepping on my sustain pedal and you could hear it playing back. So you can lower that a little bit. If you just want to hear it a little bit, you want to have that natural sound of when you would normally step on the sustain pedal of a real piano, or you can just go ahead and turn that off and it doesn't do anything. And then below all this, you have some sound shaping controls. You got volume, attack, offset, release, width, vibrato depth and rate, as well as pan with an auto pan feature. And then you also have some abilities to pitch this down as well. And then to the right of this, you'll see the category drop down. So if you click this, you'll see you have the granny piano tuned, Granny Piano Untuned, as well as some sound effects. So with the Untuned one, it definitely has that untuned sound. And then you also have the tuned version. And then you also have some sound effects. And then you could take any of these and spread them across the key range as well. So if we click this right here, select a key, and now you have that all the way across the keyboard. And then right above this, you have the X fade, and you'll see that you have A and B, and this corresponds to A and B and you'll see this on every layer. So if you click a layer and then you want it to be on layer A or layer B or none, you can do that. So this makes it to where when you learn this to your mod wheel and you're fading between these layers, you can really get some unique combinations and some unique evolving stuff, especially with the ambiences. And I'll show you this a little bit later. So before we get into that, I want to play for you some of the new sound design atmospheric pads that we've created using the content of this library. So let's go ahead and play some of these.
So to show you a little example of how the X fade works, I have a couple ambiences loaded up. I have one in Ambisynth 1 and one in Ambisynth 2. So I have Ambisynth 1 right here. I'm going to turn this one off so you can hear how it sounds. And I want to be able to start with this sound and then crossfade into the next one. So let's have a listen to the other. You can hear it kind of breaks up a little bit. It's got a little bit more of like a gritty vibe to it. So I want to be able to fade into that. So I'm going to enable both of these. So for Ambisynth 1, I'm going to set this to layer A. Ambisynth 2, I'm going to set this to layer B. And then I'm going to learn this to my mod wheel. Now let's hear how it sounds. So as you can hear, you can get a lot of movement because a lot of these ambiences are very evolving. So being able to crossfade between two different ones really can make it even more evolving and give you a little bit more control over how evolving it sounds. So if you're using this while scoring and you want to just kind of bring in a little bit of a different grittier texture on certain elements, you can do that. So before we go ahead and wrap up this walkthrough, I want to show you some of the effects in the effects rack. So if we head on over here. You'll see right now we have a reverb loaded up. So if you want to change it from a room to a hall, you just click that. You have some other options as far as being able to shape the reverb in the way that you want. If you want to add some other effects, you can do that too. So if we go down here, you see that we also have some delay, some other types of reverb, some chorus, some phaser, and a few other different options. So let's turn on this delay. And then you have a few different types. So you have modern, analog, tape, and vintage. So if you want a little bit of that vintage delay sound. And then you can also make it ping pong. So you can have it go back and forth between the stereo field, which is really cool. For the reverb, you can increase the mix a little bit. So for the effects rack, you have two different rack slots to choose from. So you have all of these available ones, and then there's also another page for you to add even more effects. So if you want to even build on this and add some more, let's say you want to add a rotator, you could do that too. So you can see with these different effects, combining with some ambiences, you can really get some really creative results. All right, so that about wraps up this walkthrough for Old Busted Granny Piano. If you'd like to learn more about this library or check out some demos to hear it in action, make sure to go to soundiron.com. Please subscribe to stay up to date on future videos like these. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.